Did Red Bull find out information regarding RB20 issues? Red Bull has given some clues as to what might be behind the balance issues with its RB20 Formula One car. Red Bull have been quite open about needing to turn around the RB20's form quickly if they don't want to lose both of this year's Formula One titles. But saying what they want is one thing, doing it is another, especially since they don't yet have a clear picture of what's wrong. Forget the wild conspiracy theories about the FIA demanding the device be removed from the car. Instead, Red Bull's problems are their own. Speaking about the balance issues that have marred the car, Horner said, the front and rear are out of balance, we can see that. Our wind tunnel doesn't say that, but the track says that. So it becomes even more important because obviously when you have that, it means you can't trust your equipment. Then you have to go back to the track data and previous experience. While there is no certainty as to what happened, there was an interesting clue from team boss Christian Horner after the Italian GP as to the cause of their woes. So could a wind tunnel issue, something that may have only come to light in the last few weeks, be the cause of the problem? In an effort to find out, it is necessary to unravel what went wrong with this team and see how they attempted to solve the problem. In terms of results and car behavior, the Miami Grand Prix seems to be the turning point. This is not only the case for Red Bull, but also for the other teams chasing it. McLaren launched its first major update of the season, which catapulted it to victory and gave it a much better platform at every event. Meanwhile, Mercedes also entered the fray with a larger upgrade package in Monaco. Ferrari had been on the front foot until around this time too before running into problems in Canada and then struggling with the return of high-speed bounce at the Spanish GP. It was another example of a team finding that their simulation was saying one thing and the real car was saying another. Red Bull has clearly been aware of the potential wind tunnel correlation issues and over the last few races, has been testing various parts of its update archive to find a solution that doesn't sacrifice too much performance. As well as addressing those issues, Red Bull have also been trying to improve the RB20, which has resulted in a near relentless development program, with updates being introduced at every race apart from Austria and Belgium. Taking a quick look at the timeline of updates since Miami, you can see how much RB20 has changed over that period, and how much of his program is split between long-term and short-term goals. The scale of the change makes it clear that, if any one component has triggered the error, it will be very difficult to figure out what it is. For Red Bull, this seems to be new territory too, as it has not faced the problems its rivals have in the last three seasons. Its development success rate has always been relatively good, producing roughly what is expected. This means not only having to learn how to deal with current problems, but also needing to understand why they happened, so that they don't happen again in the future. The key now is figuring out which tools are reliable and trustworthy. As Horner put it, it's not unusual that if something goes wrong on the car, you'll get different readings from your simulation tools, and they don't agree. Then you've got three sets of data. You've got CFD, you've got wind tunnel, and you've got track. Of course, the most important thing is track data, but to develop it, it's like telling time with three different watches. 
you have to focus on the tools that will give you the most valuable input, and of course the most reliable track data. The big question is how long it will take Red Bull to find an answer to its problem, and how much development work has been done, or is being done at its factory, that will have to be abandoned because of this issue. Like other companies in a similar situation, the consequences of spending time dealing with this can be severe. If a team is pouring effort into gathering data from legacy parts to hunt for problems, it means the focus is not on delivering fixes that make it faster. So, if you also have rivals who are on an upward trajectory, the performance gap between you and them can quickly become huge. This is a latent trait of development that is not visible, but can be very damaging, not only to the rest of this campaign, but can have implications going forward. Another factor that has not received much attention is that F1 has gone through a stretch of the calendar where Pirelli has increased minimum tire pressures to suit the load characteristics of the circuits visited. 